Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm a float pharmacist, meaning I float around different areas of the hospital and cover areas where they need me. So far, I've made day in my life videos covering internal medicine, the central IV shift, graveyard, the ER graveyard, inpatient psychiatry, and surgery. So today's full day in my life will be a full day in my life as a hospital pharmacist covering the ICU. I usually set up my alarm for 6, 10, 6, 15, around there. Wake up, brush my teeth, wash my face, put my contacts on, get changed to my scrubs. After I get changed, I usually get started on my coffee. Coffee is a non-negotiable for me. Sometimes I change it up, but most of the time it's coffee. While the coffee is going, the Vietnamese coffee, I'll be getting ready. Usually it's not a full face, just because you know I work at the hospital, I don't think it's necessary. I usually just do touch up my eyebrows, add in some concealer to cover those eye bags. I use um, the Super Goop Matte Sunscreen, so it has a little bit of tint to it, so helps cover some uneven skin tone. And I usually do eyeliner, mascara, just to look more alive. Usually this takes me at most 15 minutes. And by then, my coffee should be done. So I'll head out, prep my coffee for the morning, grab my food that I prepared the night before for work, put in my lunch bag, and get going. I'll usually arrive to work around 7.15. The hospital is quite large, so it takes me a while to walk in, get ready, set up the computer, and we get started at 7.30. The ICU shift hours are 7.30 to 4 o'clock. Now at my hospital, we actually have a pharmacy residency program and every resident is required to go through the ICU rotation. So almost every time I cover ICU, there's going to be a pharmacy resident there. So at 7.30 is when I'll do my workup, prepare in the morning, look over my patients. And 8 o'clock is when I usually pre-round with my pharmacy resident. Um, usually last until it's time for my morning huddle at 8.35. So at 8.35 is all the inpatient pharmacists. We have a meeting via Teams. Each of the departments checks in to see if there's any issues or not, or things that need to be resolved, if they need help on anything. And I usually pre-round with my pharmacy resident. We'll go thoroughly um, all the new patients, and then she'll give me a quick summary of all the old patients that's been there for a while. We'll go through our pharmacy recommendations together for each patient and I'll give her the okay if I think they're appropriate. And then around nine o'clock is when we have interdisciplinary uh, meetings. They're usually called dispo meetings or IDT. So essentially I quickly meet with the ICU attending, the dietitian, nursing staff, and whoever is able to attend. The attending will tell us a brief summary of each patient and who might likely go get downgraded to medicine, who might just um, become a surgical step down, who might transfer, etc. And then she'll go to rounds with the medicine team and the attending around 9.30. So while she's gone, I'm covering all the orders and I'm working all the performance protocols that are you know, time sensitive while she's gone. Then my resident will come back from rounds. Usually it really varies depending on you know, how the census is. So sometimes they come back around 12.30 or one, maybe even sooner if it's a small census. She'll, he or she will give me a quick summary of each patient, you know, what's going on, what are the updates, did they take our rep recommendations, or are they holding off on it for now? And after that, we'll both go to lunch. Once we come back, we continue verifying orders, helping out with the pharmacy protocol. So what's unique about ICU is that a lot of these patients are critically ill, they're on a lot of pressors, so you have to be really familiar with those type of medications. A lot of ICU patients are intubated, so you have to be very familiar with different sedatives like propofol, Presidex, all the different drips and their infusion rates, how to titrate it, what makes them contraindicated, you have to be really familiar with neuromuscular blocking agents. 
like succinylcholine, fracuronium, rocuronium. In what situations would you use them? When would you not? There's a lot of guidelines that you should be familiar with. It's like, especially the sepsis guidelines. A lot of our patients are septic. Also the PADIS guidelines. And a lot of our patients are so critically ill, they're on TPN. So you need to be familiar with total parental nutrition. And that would be the Aspen guidelines. 